Alright, so what exactly am I doing in my car? Um, tonight we're going to go do a full build, like, recap, what I've done to my car, what happened to it, why it had to be rebuilt, and uh, everything that I put into it. We'll talk money, you know, whatever, how much I've spent on parts, the exact reason that it blew up. Um, I've got, like, a, pl a plethora of uh, reasons why that happened. Um, so, yeah. See you there. So I'm driving right now, going down to the parking garage to get this video done. Uh, almost there, we got about 5-10 more minutes. Just got some gas really quick. And uh, yeah, we're on our way. Alright, so bear with me. Over here we have my 2008 Subaru Impreza WRX. Uh, I'm going to go over all the mods, everything I've done to the car. And then from there, I will take you around and do some shots of all the parts. I'll explain why I had to rebuild it. You might hear an echo. Sorry, I'm in a parking garage. Um, I'll explain why I had to go through all this shit. All right, so as I was saying, we're going to go over the interior first. Um, okay. Here we've got a, I, I think it's a Turbo Smart uh, pillar pod. Uh, we've got Pro Sport boost gauge, Pro Sport oil pressure gauge, and an AM air fuel ratio gauge. This is not hooked up yet because I have not found someone to weld in the bung for me. Um, so that's unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. I am running a Axis Port V3. I've got the uh, Escort radar detector, a Cobb shift knob. Some weather tech floor mats and some mess. Don't look over there. Um, and that's about it for the interior modifications. We have the heated seats and do you consider, uh, weather techs and interior modifications. I do. They're, it's a good upgrade for any car. Okay. <laughs> weather tech floor mats. They're helpful. They keep your carpets in good condition. I also do have this uh, uh, harness bar in the back seat. But that's that. Ultimate rice? That's for ultimate rice. Did you get to your fence? Alright, so front end. What I've done to this. I did a rewire so that I can have my fog lights on without having my daytime running lights or any other lights on. So I can just run fog lights and side markers if I want. Um, I can run just fog lights, do whatever I want to, you know. That was a simple, um, just jump it over to a fuse that's got constant 12 volt all the keys on. Uh, I did the Grimspeed license plate relocation bracket, a mock STI front lip. It's from eBay, it's like 70 bucks. It does the job and it looks good. All right, that's all that matters is it does the job and it looks good. Uh, also, we have the STI grill, which is definitely an improvement. I'll insert, is that Aaron? Uh, I'll insert a photo of the stock grill. It's terrible, like here or over here, wherever, you know. I'll put it up there. Um. As Aaron comes in, ruins the fun. Um. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go over internal mods first, and then we'll work our way up from the bottom. So, starting on the inside of the motor, we've got CP pistons, Manly H tough rods. They have the uh, ARP hardware, of course. King XPG bearings. Um, then in the heads, we've got Manly upgraded valve springs, stock valves. Um, we had new valve guides installed, new valve uh, seals installed. I built the whole motor myself. I can put like a little time lapse because I have a video of it in the video, like here somewhere. Um, what else? Oh, so yeah, the heads are pretty much stock, just except for those uh, manly valve springs. That's about it. Uh, I didn't want to go crazy because these heads were kind of messed up after the motor got the rod knock. Uh, the material went through the head. And like, there was so much material that went through the motor that after running it, because I drove it home, which was a terrible mistake, never do that, just call a tow truck, it's, you're better off. Um, I drove it home from where I blew it up and that caused a lot more damage in the heads because right where the cams ride, it's, it's a journal, it's a, there's no bearing on the cams. So it's just this metal, you know, metal rod riding on an aluminum block, like an aluminum, you know, head. So what happened was 
metal went through the oil, but it went through like the, the fills, the fill holes all around the cams and scored out the, uh, like right where the cams ride. So that got polished by the machine shop, but I still think it's got some slight issues because um, it does burn a little bit of oil. I think that has to do with, you know, having forged pistons and actually the type of pistons I have because, but there's two types of aluminum when it comes to forged pistons. I don't know the exact names of them, but like one's a 26 something, the other one's like a 40, oh, 4032, something like that. It's different alloy types. One grows faster than the other, has less expansion, one has more expansion. These pistons that I have have a larger expansion rate. Um, so you have to have more clearance between the piston and the uh, cylinder walls which was almost a mistake for a daily driver, but it's the longevity of a higher horsepower build. You'll get more out of a higher horsepower build with those pistons rather than the other alloy, which I don't know off the top of my head. I'll put it in the description below. Um, all right, next from the heads, now we're up to the TGVs. Now stock, these cars have like a little butterfly valve that closes half of the like intake runners off down in here more. You can't really see it, it's dark, but like here, right down there, usually there's a rod with a little butterfly valve. When it's cold, it closes half of it off. It's almost like a choke in an old carburetor car. I deleted that, uh, just better flow, and I kind of port and polished it a little bit. Uh, then from there, working off the TGVs, I have, you can see it better over here. I have IEG fuel rails. Now, what that's gonna do is, the stock fuel rails are pretty good for most horsepower, most modern horsepower applica applications, but since I wanna go E85, which I will be doing in the future, uh, I wanted to have the clearance, you know, I wanted to have the, the headroom um, for when I upgrade to E85. So I have the aftermarket fuel rails, custom fuel lines that are run over to this air motive fuel pressure regulator. From there, the turbo is a Blausch 3.0 XTR turbo and um, the headers are NVIDIA equal length headers. Then from there, it goes up to the, Invi or the Grim Speed 38 millimeter wastegate up pipe. Um, and I have a tile 38 millimeter wastegate with 18 PSI springs in there. Um, then it's an NVIDIA downpipe, Catalyst downpipe, run to a NVIDIA N1 race exhaust. So this front mount is a system from eBay believe it or not, and it hasn't given me too many problems. You know, it holds the boost, there's no problems with the cooling, it has great uh, cooling properties, and, you know. It keeps the engine, the intake temperatures down, which is pretty much all you need from it. In the future, I'm gonna go with the ETS front mount, a fatter one to cool it down even better, but for what I'm doing right now, this is plenty. Uh, this here is actually part of a cob kit because I didn't wanna have to deal with getting the intake air temperature sensor, the uh, speed density sensor there. I didn't want to have to get that welded in, the bung for it. So I just bought this half, the, uh, the cold side piping, just so I didn't have to deal with that. But then later on, I had this wastegate flange welded on. So I mean, I could have just, you know, honestly, it probably would have been cheaper just to take what I had and have it welded on, but I didn't, so whatever, you know. So this, speaking of the wastegate, or the wastegate, Speaking of the blow off valve, this is a Tile Q 50 millimeter blow off valve. Um, the one I had on before that was a, I want to say it was a Turbo Smart recirc valve. So what it was, it just, it was meant to be recirculated back into the intake, back into this inlet tube right here. But seeing that I went speed density, I just wanted to go race car shit. So I went full atmospheric instead of recirculating, um, which with the speed density tune, you can do that without any issues. Uh, now, onto this. This is the turbo inlet. So what that is, is it's what drives the air into the turbo since this upgraded turbo is a stock location kit. Instead of having it rotated, and it's more expensive. This turbo is so much cheaper. It's a pain in the ass though. Like, if you're gonna do this turbo, don't get this hard inlet. Get the parent inlet. It's gonna make your life so much easier. I got a good deal on this inlet. Uh, I was working on a friend's car and he had an extra one. He just hooked me up with it for working on his car for him. So that was awesome. Um, then that's the Mishimoto race intake, which is a three inch intake. That's just so that it can match the turbo inlet. What else do we have? Oh, Grim Speed three port boost control solenoid. That pretty much just uh, 
it, it takes information from the map sensor, which is your how much pressure, manifold absolute pressure. So the way I think of this is, the manifold absolute pressure sensor, which I have a Cobb 4 bar, that takes the pressure reading and tells your ECU what the pressure is to then tell the boost controller to adjust the wastegate open or closed to keep you at a, whatever the boost level you're running. I'm running a 23.5 PSI um, tune right now, so it keeps it right there. It holds it flat. Like on the dyno, it pulls up and then holds that boost pressure straight across the board, which is fantastic. Um, that... All right, moving on. We've got the Crawford air oil separator. Now that's pretty much like, that should honestly be like the second or third mod you do on a Subaru. These cars have a problem. Um, well, pretty much all cars. Once you start modding them, you'll get blow by, you'll get detonation issues by getting oil back into your intake. So you wanna minimize the amount of oil that you're getting into your cylinders as much as, you wanna minimize it as much as possible. So what this does is it takes the oil vapor from the crankcase and pretty much eliminates it down to nothing so that you're not getting oil back into the engine while back into the combustion chambers so you don't get detonation problems. Uh, next we have a Perrin uh, lightweight crank pulley that's down in here. It's a stock clutch for now. I mean, it's doing its job. It's holding the power, surprisingly, a 348 horsepower and 345 torque. It's holding that consistently. It's starting to slip now, but that's 18,000 miles after the build. So planning to upgrade to a, I don't pay attention to stages. It's an ACT street strip, uh, six puck sprung clutch. It's good for like 535 torque. So that's good because I'm going E85, hopefully this summer, the springtime. Uh, I have the sensor. I just need new injectors, a surge tank for my fuel um, because currently it's gonna run on fuel. I have a Dishworks 300C that's, it's just not gonna handle all the fuel that it needs to power what it's doing. Uh, Cause hopefully, hopefully cross your fingers, this will be making like 480 to 500 horse. That's, that's the goal. But yeah, that's, that's that with the engine build. Um, nothing crazy for the flywheel. It's just a stock flywheel. It's been resurfaced. Perrin uh, crank pulley, lightweight crank pulley. And yeah, oh, suspension. I just have teen lowering springs. And before that, I had Raceland coilovers, which blew. I mean, they were good while they lasted, but that's that. The reason I blew the car up, I was doing flat spins. I remember it so vividly, like it was the middle of winter. Me and my friend, uh, we were going, just driving around trying to find places to do donuts in the snow. Um, and first we went to this place my uncle plows. It was like, you know, it was like whatever, I didn't want to bother him, so we're like, screw it. We'll go up to the old high school. So we went to our old high school. We started doing donuts there. Everything was great. You know, I had a go I had a blast. And then, you know, and then I just kept going. I, I, uh, I was, yeah, so I was doing flat spins in like second gear. Um, it, it was a good time. And then I decided to hit rev limiter for a little bit too long. The next thing I knew, I stopped the car and I was like, dude, that was sick. And I heard the rod knock. At this point, I kind of freaked out. I was like, well, I'm fucked. Excuse me, excuse my language. But I was like, yeah, no, I'm screwed. Um, so I pulled the car over and I parked it. And at that point, I, oh God, sorry. At that point, I went and got in the car with Tomaine and we just started doing donuts in his Mustang. <sighs> About a half hour later, I jumped back in the car because I'm going home. I probably should have towed it, like I said earlier. I definitely should have just towed the car, but I drove it home. It was probably about a 10 minute drive in the snow. It was terrible. Um, I had to say every single stoplight, the car would die. So I had to sit there and feather the gas to keep it running because it just didn't want to keep running. It was really in bad shape. I should have just towed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
If you did, hit that like button, subscribe for more, and uh, leave me a comment. I want to hear feedback from you guys. I want to hear whatever you have to say. Any kind of tips, any hints, hints, tips, tricks, whatever. Put it down below so that I can improve the video quality. You know, help me out. Help me help you to enjoy the video more. Um, I love doing it. It's a lot of fun. So just, yeah. Thanks for watching.